Hello, good morning everyone, Rich Wong here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are looking at a pretty special lens from TT Artisan. It is this TT Artisan 100mm f2.8 bubble bokeh. Yes, this is the official name of this lens. A quick usual disclaimer before we start. The sample I used in this review was sent to me by TT Artisan. Well, actually, sorry, this one I picked it up from TT Artisan's headquarters myself when I went to visit them back in August. By the way, I did an interview with TT Artisan's founder, Mr. Lee, and we talked about their design philosophy, their upcoming products, and a few other things. So if you haven't watched that yet, please check it out after you finish watching this review. I usually would start my lens review by talking about the design construction of the lens and then I will share my usual image quality test results like the sharpness, lens flare, etc. But this time, I will do it slightly differently because this is quite an unusual lens. If you are only interested in lenses that are technically perfect or as close to that as possible, then I will now tell you, you can skip watching this review because the purpose of this lens is not to deliver perfect image quality. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the image quality is horrible with this lens because it is not and I will still share with you my image quality test results later on as well. But the reason why this lens exists is to offer something a little bit different a lens that is focused on the character, the artistic side of photography, something fun. Even just after I shot my first photo with this lens, I already noticed the rendering from this TT Artisan lens is quite different from the normal lenses. To show you what I mean, here are two side-by-side -side comparison photos. One shot with this TT Artisan lens and the other one shot with the Lumix S Pro 70 to 200 f4 lens. The photo from the TT Artisan lens has noticeably lower contrast. It is quite different from the photo shot with the Lumix lens. The bokeh from these two lenses are also quite different. With the Lumix lens, the bokeh balls has much smoother transition and also almost no cat's eye effect at the corner while the bokeh balls from the TT Artisan lens has a very noticeable halo ring at the outside edge. Hence, it has the name Bubble Bokeh. The bokeh looks like a bubble. And there's also a bit of cat's eye effect near the corner of the frame. The photo shot with this TT Artisan lens give me what I would call the vintage look. The main subject will look slightly soft, the image has low contrast, low saturation, as well as the bubble bokeh. It has very strong character that you either love it or hate it. If you love it, or at least quite curious, then let's continue the review. This lens is a fully manual and mechanical lens designed for full frame cameras. For a 100mm f2.8 lens, it's quite a small lens and the weight is only around 300 gram, even though it has a full metal construction. We have the aperture ring at the front of the lens and the focus ring at the back. The aperture ring has clicks, two clicks per stop from f2.8 to f11, and then it becomes one click per stop. The clicks feels very satisfying. The focus ring is very smooth and the focus flow is approximately 180 degree. This is not an internal focus lens and the length of the lens will increase as you change the focus from infinity to near focus. This 100mm f2.8 lens has an extremely simple optics design. Only three elements, which I believe is based on the Coke triplet design from more than 100 years ago. This lens was originally released in M42 MAN. For most of us, we would use an adapter and then we can use this lens on pretty much any mirrorless cameras in the market. However, one thing that you need to be aware is that since the M42 MAN is a screw thread MAN, so when you use it with an adapter, 
it's quite likely the center line of the lens would not align correctly with the camera. What I mean is, if you look at my camera, I use a M42 to L mount adapter, and up the top of the lens is facing the side towards the bottom of the camera. So if I want to check the focus and aperture, I have to turn the camera around. It does make using this lens not really easy as I can't see the aperture or focus setting easily. But this is not a unique problem with this lens. If you are adapting any M42 lenses, you will have the same issue. And to avoid that, you need to get an adapter that has an adjustable center line. So you can adjust the center line of the lens and align it with the camera. When I'm working on this review, TT Artisan has just released a new M mount version. The M mount version has range finder coupling, so you can focus easily with a M mount camera. So that's what you should get if you are using a Leica M mount camera. But even if you are shooting with other mirrorless cameras, it is probably better to get the M mount version as you can still adapt it easily and you wouldn't have the misaligned center line issue because the M mount is not a screw mount. The downside with the M mount version is that it is a bit more expensive than the M42 version. But depends on if you already have a M mount adapter or not, the M mount version may still work out to be the same price or even a little bit cheaper. Let's have a look at the image sharpness now and start with the center sharpness. At f2.8, the center is a bit soft. We can see a bit of glow effect, which is probably not a bad thing if you are shooting portrait. It helps soften the skin a bit, but it's not very good if you want to shoot landscape or anything that want to have excellent sharpness. Stopping down to f4 and there is some big improvement to the center sharpness. The center sharpness becomes excellent at f5.6 and remains similar until around f16 when diffraction reduces the sharpness. If you look at the corner, at f2.8, the corner is really very soft to the point I almost can't read anything on my test chart. Stopping down the lens would gradually improve the corner sharpness, but we have to stop down all the way to f11 to get great corner sharpness. These test results we just saw were all shot when I focused at the center of the photo. I tried to focus at the corner of the frame and see if there's any difference, but the corner sharpness were still pretty much the same. The minimum focus distance of this lens is 90 cm, and here is a photo I shot at the minimum focus distance. In terms of maximum magnification, it is about average, not really high magnification, but it should still be okay for some close-up photos or a tight head and shoulder portrait shot. When shooting at the minimum focus distance, at f2.8, the photo is a bit soft, there's quite a bit of glow effect, and the contrast is also a bit low. Stopping down to f4, both the sharpness and contrast becomes much better. At f5.6, both sharpness and contrast becomes pretty decent. At f2.8, the lens has a small amount of vignetting. Stopping down to f4, the vignetting becomes almost not noticeable. From f5.6 onwards, there is virtually no vignetting. So overall, vignetting performance of this lens is very good. I really wasn't sure what I should expect when it comes to chromatic aberration. Would there be a lot of nasty color fringing because of the very simple free elements optics design? Or would this very simple design actually help minimize the amount of chromatic aberration? But I'm happy to report this lens actually doesn't have too much chromatic aberration. Most of the high contrast scene I shot, I see almost no color fringing. 
And even in the photo that I see some color fringing, the amount is still very minimal. Look at this brick wall test photo. There really isn't much distortion at all. So if you are shooting some real world photos, you almost certainly won't have any issues with distortion. My regular viewers would know I always complain about TT Artisan lenses, lens flare performance. Surprisingly, with this 100mm lens, the lens flare performance is actually not too bad. Most of the time, there is very small amount of lens flare. Now, sometimes when there is a very strong light source pretty much in front of the camera, the contrast could still drop quite a bit, but I myself don't really mind because I feel it just adds a bit of character to the photo captured by this TT Artisan lens. If you want to get some sun stars from this lens, you need to stop down the lens a lot. Only from around f16, we start to get some sharp sun stars from this 100mm lens. When we stop down the lens to the minimum aperture f22, sun stars does look pretty nice and sharp. So yes, you can get some nice sun stars with this lens, but you really need to stop down the lens all the way to f22 or at least f16. Now, if you are interested in using this lens for videography, focus briefing is really quite noticeable. Look at this test footage. You can see the view of view changes significantly when I change the focus from 1 meter to infinity. My regular viewers would know I have a soft spot for lens that has characters that is weird and not just about maximum sharpness. So I was really excited when I picked up this lens from TT Artisan a few months ago. And since then, I have been carrying with me quite often and I took a lot of photos with this lens. The bubble bokeh definitely looks very special, but I also really love how this lens render the photo with the low contrast, low saturation, that vintage look. Combining that with the smooth manual focus control and the clicked aperture ring, it is just a lot of fun shooting with this lens. But I also understand not everyone would enjoy this lens. Some of you might think this lens is just a gimmick. Well, maybe it is, maybe it's not, I don't really know. But I can tell you I have a lot of fun shooting with this lens and I also really like the photo that I shot with this lens even though technically the photos are far from perfect. Some of you will probably know this TT Allison 100mm bubble bokeh lens is very similar to the Maya Optics Gorlitz Trail Brand 100mm lens. Before this TT Artisan lens was released, a lot of people were paying up to $1,000 US to get the Maya Optics Gorlitz lens to get that same special bubble bokeh. But now you can get pretty much the same results with this TT Artisan lens. They are both 100mm f2.8 sharing the very similar optics design, but the price of this TT Artisan lens is much cheaper. The M42 mount version of this TT Artisan 100mm lens is only 150 US dollar. Even the more expensive M mount version is still just a bit over 200 dollar. That is much cheaper than the true print and give you very similar rendering. And I think that has to be one of the biggest selling points of this TT Artisan lens. I said that because while the bubble bokeh rendering is really quite special, it has a lot of character, but even if you really like it, you may still not want to use it to shoot every photo. This is the type of lens that I would take it with me when I'm shooting weddings or portrait, but I would probably only use it to take a few special photos, then I would go back to my normal portrait lenses. So I really wouldn't want to spend a thousand dollar to buy a lens like this that I only use it to take a few photos. But since this lens is only 150 or 200 dollar, then it's really not a problem at all. 
I'm really glad to see TT Addison has created this special 100mm bubble bokeh lens and I would love to see some more fun and unique yet affordable lenses like this in the future.